Hello, welcome to the Ocean County School Counselors Association Virtual College Fair. My name is Becca Russo and I will be facilitating this event. Thank you so much for joining us. A few housekeeping announcements before we get started. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. Your camera and microphone are off, so the panelists cannot see or hear you. This is just one of many different sessions happening. Be sure to sign up, um, or you can sign up for sessions on demand. This presentation is being recorded and will be available within about a week at strivescan.com backslash O-C-S-C-A. Now I'd like to turn it over to our presenters. So starting first is Plymouth State University. Take it away. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us today. Hope everyone's doing well over in the Ocean County area. Um, my name is Ryan Battaglia. I am going to share a presentation on Plymouth State University. So one second here. So I'm sure most of you are wondering where we are located. We are right in central New Hampshire, right at the gateway of the White Mountain National Forest. So within our region, as you can see here, we do have a nice New England mountainous vibe. So our college campus is a small kind of New England um, boarding school type feel. Um, we are two hours north of Boston, and there's actually a bus station that takes you from the center of campus all the way to the center of Boston. So if you're looking to get a train over to Boston and transport over there um, from bus and then to campus, that is absolutely doable. And so you just get a picture of our campus feel. We do have about 4,000 students um, and the majority of these students do live on campus full time. Uh, so 96% actually live within a mile radius. Um, and with this size, you do get a nice close personal uh, teaching experience with your faculty and professors. Um, and it is a pretty diverse campus as well as we recruit from 45 different states in the US in 26 countries. Now at Plymouth State, what is there to do? There's obviously a ton of outdoor activities. This picture here um, is a club and organization called the um, Rail Jam. So it's a student run event. Um, the free ski team, the snowboarders, they'll compete against each other um, in an event, but they'll also set it up. They'll market it on campus. They'll partner with local ski mountains. If you wanna stay more in the academic side of clubs and organizations, you can be a part of stuff in your major. So business has a lot of those. Student Nursing Association, the American Meteorological Club. Uh, we also have a radio station for on campus. So if you are a um, on the communication side of things, then you can definitely get involved on the radio station. Our top majors by popularity and just student body side are gonna be business, criminal justice, and education. We used to be called Plymouth Teachers College, so literally teaching teachers. And it is totally okay to go undeclared as well. Um, you don't have to declare a major until the end of sophomore year. Some other interesting majors, music and theater performance, meteorology, um, and we do have nursing as well here at Plymouth. Now, one thing to point out about Plymouth's teaching approach is our integrated clusters. Um, and essentially, these are cross-major projects that you work on, um, and they run for like a year long, maybe a couple of years. So you'll have the chance to take one, maybe two, maybe four classes uh, in a clusters project. So they are real world projects. So you're almost getting uh, internship experience in the classroom. Uh, for example, if you are a marketing student, you can go work in um, with Northern New Hampshire. They're helping um, building up websites, graphic design. They're even working with French majors to do like the French Canadian tourism and attracting that population. And that's just one of those projects, but you can see on the Venn diagram on the left, there's all these different subject areas and they all cross into each other into larger projects. So uh, more on our website if you are interested on that. Now we wanna make sure you are successful here at Plymouth and we do have first year advisors for all of our students. Um, this is a student success coach who's gonna help you with that first year, um, just your go-to person, kind of your encyclopedia for college. You will be assigned academic advisors within your major afterwards, but that's just a highlight for first year. We also have accessibility services on campus to help with 504 and IEP students. We are also a part of TRIO, which helps underprivileged students and first-gen students. And we do have free 
student tutoring as well. We are guaranteed housing all four years at Plymouth, um, but the trend usually is you live in the first year halls freshman year, you live in the student apartments or suite style dorms junior year and sophomore year, uh, and then senior year, we, there is a privilege of moving off campus. And like I was saying, all these off campus houses and apartments are within a mile radius. Also, all, all freshmen can have cars on campus. If you are interested in athletics, we do have 25 NCAA Division III sports. Uh, we have a brand new men's swimming and diving team, um, you know, but we also have the basics as well. And we also have uh, Alpine race skiing, which is definitely one of the more unique teams that we have on campus. Um, but if you are interested in the outdoors, we have $5 ski tickets at our local mountain, an incredible deal. And there's a total of three to four mountains within 30 minutes of campus. Um, so we love the outdoors. We want to make sure that you have that opportunity to try that if you're at Plymouth, uh, discounted rentals, discounted um, lessons as well. Now, if you are applying to Plymouth, we're available on the Common App that does require a fee. And then we are available on our website with the Panther application as well. No fee on that. Now, when you apply to Plymouth, we don't require test scores. That's something that is not on here, but we wanna see you have the basic CP curriculum. Um, you're engaged out of the classroom with job, club, sports, whatever that is. And then on average, our students are applying with a 3.0. Um, and again, no SATs required. Usually nursing does require that, but they've been waived for the next couple of years just because of COVID. Now, some deadlines to point out, and these are important for any college you go to. The number one is gonna be FAFSA. So keep that in mind as you're moving forward. Cost and scholarships, out of state student sticker price before any aid. And then we do offer merit scholarships based on GPA. If you wanna take a quick picture and moving on, some accolades, alumni, and contact details. Thank you everyone, appreciate your time tonight. I hope all my colleagues have a good presentation too. So um, enjoy and hope to hear from you. Thanks, Ryan. Up next, we have Rutgers University. All right, good evening, everybody. My name is Mitch Marcus. I'm one of our admissions coordinators with Rutgers University, New Brunswick. I'm just gonna start sharing my screen. So um, I am a proud Rutgers alumni, graduated a few years ago from our School of Arts and Sciences with a bachelor's degree in psychology. I had two minors in biology and Spanish. I'm currently a graduate student at our School of Public Health. So if you have any questions, please feel free to ask me. Let's go ahead and get started. So for those of you not familiar with Rutgers University in New Brunswick, we are the flagship institution of the state of New Jersey, having over 30,000 undergraduate um, undergraduate students on our campus. We are a large public research university and there's a lot of things that go into that, but I just wanna highlight a few couple of things that make us really unique. We are part of the Big Ten Conference, which means that we have some academic as well as athletic partnerships with some peer institutions throughout the country, which we're really excited to be able to collaborate with. We are also a really diverse campus itself. We are the number one most diverse school within our conference and our students do come from all sorts of walks of life with different beliefs, backgrounds, and knowledge that they bring onto the campus setting. Additionally, we are really prideful in terms of our um, activities and organizations that you can get involved with. And so we have over 750 student organizations for you to get acclimated outside of the classroom and really engage yourself throughout your camp time with us on campus. As we move into the campus itself, um, we are broken up into what we call five really distinct neighborhoods. So you kind of have a different feel depending on where you are on the campus itself. Um, the information I put for you in the chat will allow you to kind of explore our virtual tours and opportunities to get to know us since we are currently operating in a remote setting. But we are a really unique campus with that connectivity to New York City and Philadelphia being really central in the state of New Jersey. And so it does allow for our students to garner professional development opportunities being so close to major companies in these areas. When it comes to student life, I kind of hinted at it a little bit, but we have over 750 student organizations on the campus. Some of that includes that we have over two dozen division one sports that are part of the Big Ten Conference. But if you're not really interested in athletics, there's a whole slew of different things that you can do. We have student led cultural centers, a lot of philanthropic opportunities, opportunities for students who are interested in the arts, leadership, 
or just giving back to the community. We think civic engagement is a really important and critical part of the campus setting itself. And so we really do encourage our students whenever possible to volunteer to give back to the New Brunswick and Piscataway communities in which we reside. We are also a third of our student body being first generation. So we think it's really important as part of student life to take that into account when we're providing some of the services on campus. So if anyone on the call this evening does identify as being the first in your family to be going to college, we do have kind of an umbrella program called the RU First Initiative, which again will help you provide with some additional mentor services, financial aid opportunities, and some peer. Wow. Um, Is there something else? Sorry, my watch is going off. And some peer exercises that can kind of help you with that transition from high school to college if you are interested in those services available to you. When it comes to our academic programs, we offer seven different first year schools. I won't go too in depth with each of these, but please note that if you are interested in the various opportunities, there is a, the ability to kind of mix and match programs as well as to transition from one to another should you have a change in terms of what you're interested in studying. We aren't necessarily known for one thing in terms of academics. We have a whole slew of variety of fields. Our School of Arts and Sciences tends to be our largest college, our liberal arts college with over 70 of the 100 plus majors offered. We also have a School of Pharmacy where you can obtain a doctorate degree immediately out of high school, a School of Engineering, Business School, Nursing, a school really focused in STEM, so that's Science, Technology, Engineering, and Math, in our School of Environmental and Biological Sciences. And for our friends who are more creatively inclined, we do offer also offer a smaller arts conservatory in our Mason Gross School of the Arts if you're thinking about those fields. When it comes to the application process as well, I just want to kind of highlight where you can find us and what steps you need to take to get there. So we're available either on our homegrown application, admissions.ruckers.edu slash apply, or you can find us on the coalition application as well. We don't have a preference for either platform, so you're welcome to apply through either means. We are also a school that is test optional for 2022. So moving forward, if you are thinking about applying to Rutgers, SAT or ACT scores will not be a requirement as part of our application process. What we do instead require is that you self-report your grades through a self-reported academic record. So instead of sending us transcripts, you'll actually report through what coursework you took in high school and how well you did in those classes as well. And we do require a $70 application fee to apply to up to three of our colleges that you just saw a minute ago. But if you do possess a fee waiver or it would pose a financial hardship, please reach out to us. We're happy to waive that fee whenever possible. And just to keep in mind, we do have some dates and deadlines. Our early action deadline will be November 1, regular decision being December 1. The difference between those two just being when you get your actual admissions decision, um, as long as you apply for our December 1 deadline, so any students who apply for November 1, you're automatically considered for merit-based aid opportunities, as well as honors opportunities that are offered at Rutgers University, New Brunswick. And this is just our contact information for now. In case anyone does have any questions, you're welcome to reach out to us via email or call. I'm really glad that we could be with you here tonight and hope that you got some good information. I'm gonna pass it over to my next colleague. Thanks everybody. Thank you. Up next, we have Savannah College of Art and Design. Awesome, thank you so much. I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen with y'all. Just give me one second. All right, here we go. Um, how's everyone doing tonight? My name is Brett Sherman. I'm an assistant director of admissions for SCAD, um, the Savannah College of Art and Design. Um, I'm based in Philadelphia for SCAD and I'm also a SCAD alumni from the graphic design department. We're gonna jump into a few things so you guys can learn a little bit more about SCAD. So we were founded back in 1978 and really since then we've grown to become one of the most comprehensive and connected art and design universities in the country. We've certainly grown since then so now we have approximately uh, 15,000 students representing all 50 states and more from more than 100 countries and around 25% of our student body is international as well. We have over 100 plus degree programs at SCAD. So that's more than 40 majors and more than 75 minors to choose from. So we really have something for everybody. Um, some of our top majors are animation, interior design, graphic design, film and TV and fashion. When you're accepted to SCAD, you're accepted to all of our majors as well. So you don't have to feel like you need to be the best at anything coming in. Um, you actually have your first year and a half actually to decide what major you wanna be a part of as well. Talk about some of our locations. SCAD has locations in Atlanta, Georgia, Lacoste, France, Savannah, Georgia, and also online via SCAD eLearning, which means that when you're accepted to SCAD, you're accepted to all of our campuses. 
Um, so you can begin your years at SCAD Atlanta in a thriving business and film production hub. You can venture to the peaceful scenic hills of Southern France to study at our study abroad campus of SCAD Lacoste. And then circle back across the Atlantic to the historic squares and cobblestone streets of beautiful Savannah, Georgia. Or be a part of our e-learning program, which is available online wherever you feel comfortable. Now, there are always three things that I like to talk about with you guys during the short time that I have with you. The three things are going to be important to you if you guys end up choosing SCAD. Those three things are going to be your professors at SCAD, the technology at SCAD, and also the internship opportunities. So we'll start off with our professors. All of our professors at SCAD have to have industry experience to be able to work at our school, um, which means that all of your professors are going to be masters within your major and also come with great knowledge as well as unmatched uh, connections to your industry as well. So a ton of industry connections with whatever major you guys um, decide to go into. Technology is the next one. So all of our technology is top notch at SCAD. Um, everything's industry standard. So whatever they're using in the industry, you'll be using at SCAD, okay? So whether it's an uh, AR or VR studio, a green screen technology, sewing machine, um, again, you're gonna be prepared for your first job coming out of school with all of that technology. We also have internship opportunities. One is called SCAD Pro. It's an in-house internship where students dream up design solutions for global brands. We helped um, redesign uh, Disney resorts. We pitched the future of advertising to Google and marketed driveless cars for Volvo. So all of those things kind of lead to this one number at SCAD, which is our alumni employment rate. Within 10 months of graduation, 99% of our students have jobs and 91% of our students um, are in a creative field. So these extraordinary numbers are obviously a testament to the talented students like you guys that are coming through SCAD, but it also speaks volumes about the quality of a SCAD education. <clears throat> and a lot of our grads are going on uh, and working at you know big places such as Netflix, Chanel, Pixar, Apple, Spotify, Instagram, just to name a few. So if you guys are kind of thinking about how you can get to SCAD a little bit earlier, we have summer program opportunities. Um, we have two of them. One is called Summer Seminars. The other one is called Rising Star. You can be any grades for the Summer Seminar, which is a workshop style uh, uh, kind of summer program. And then we also have a five week long program. If you're a junior going to your senior year, you can take advantage of as well. We also have dual enrollment programs where you guys can get a head start of and taking college level classes at half price tuition if you're above the age of 16. And lastly, the admission process is very simple with us. We're on rolling admission, it takes about 10 minutes to complete our application on our website. We created a nice user-friendly application. Um, once you complete your application, you're assigned your admission advisor. That person's basically gonna walk you through all of your next steps. We require a 3.0 GPA, a 1,080 on the SATs or a 21 on the ACTs normally, but we are test optional for 2021 students and officially for 2022 students, okay? Um, portfolio is not required to get into SCAD. Um, and that's kind of what the portfolio process or the uh, admission process kind of looks like. If you guys want to visit SCAD at any point, we are offering in-person tours and you can also visit us virtually. We have a little person that will pop up on the bottom of the screen and walk you through some of our buildings. So if you and your families want to learn a little bit more about SCAD, feel free to reach out to me directly. That is my direct work phone and also my email address. I'd be happy to walk you through um, and do some portfolio reviews and tell you a little bit more about SCAD. So thank you guys so much. Thank you. Up next, we have Shippensburg University. All right, good evening, everyone. All right, so I'm gonna tell you a little bit about Shippensburg University. Uh, my name is Brandi Brady. I am one of the assistant directors of admissions at SHIP and also a proud Shippensburg University graduate. Um, I completed both my undergraduate and my master's at SHIP. So very much love um, everything that it has to offer uh, me as a student. And then now I get to pay, uh, pay to share my um, wisdom with all of you um, with my SHIP experience. So a little bit about Shippensburg, if you're not familiar, we are one of the 14 state system schools in Pennsylvania. Um, so we are located about three and a half hours away, so not too terribly far. Um, with being one of the 14 state system schools, we tend to fall towards the middle to the upper end for size. So we do have about 6,000 students on our campus, giving us that average class size then around 23. Usually pretty typical of your high school class. 
Um, general education purposes, you might experience a class as large as about 50 or 55, um, but you won't experience anything much larger than that. Shippensburg does offer a wide array of majors and minors as well, which we'll get to in the next slide. Um, we were founded as a teacher's college, so we have a lot of strength uh, and rootedness in um, being a teacher's college, but again, we'll jump to that next. 11 different nationally recognized programs. So again, top-notch, high-quality programs that you'll find across the board. And then other ways to help you be a successful learner. Um, we do have study abroad options with being a state system school. We do work with a lot of schools um, around the world to provide that accessibility of getting um, wherever in the world you want to go. Majority of our students will study abroad between their sophomore and junior year. Um, but again, that is a possibility available. With your academic support, we offer a learning center, um, a student's first center, a writing studio. We want to see you be the most successful student possible. Um, so we really will provide a lot of academic resources, including an academic advisor that will guide you in taking the classes that you need, getting the internships you need um, in your four years as a SHIP student. So as I mentioned, this does touch on all of our academic programs. Um, being founded as a teacher's college, um, as I mentioned, a lot of strength in that. We offer pre-K through four, four through eight, and secondary education, as well as a lot of other options then within our College of Education and Human Services. Um, our John O. Grove College of Business is also um, AACSB internationally accredited. Uh, so we're kind of the forerunner in the state system for business. So we've got a lot of strength behind that. Our business students have the ability to double major, still graduate in four years on time without any sort of extra classes. Um, and fun fact, we also ne nearly 90% of our business college students take at least one internship before they graduate. So the hands-on opportunities are readily available. With the College of Arts and Sciences, again, a lot of different programs, um, depending on what you're looking for. Some that I'll point out, um, we do have a nationally recognized communication journalism program um, with a TV station, radio station, newspaper, magazine, yearbook, um, lots of ways for our students to get involved directly on our campus with that specific major. Um, really a lot of strength as well um, in any of our subjects that allow for our stu uh, students to become teachers. So if you're interested in teaching history at the secondary ed level, um, a lot of strength and success in those programs as well. Um, additionally, you will see we do offer a School of Engineering. Um, so again, Shippensburg is kind of the forerunner in the state system for computer science and engineering options. Uh, we offer five different engineering programs. They're all full four-year bachelor degrees uh, and some master programs as well, uh, depending on what you're looking into. Um, so we do have our AACSB accreditation in a few of them, and we'll hopefully, fingers crossed, have the rest by the end of the year. Last column you'll see, we do offer exploratory studies. If you don't know what you want to study, that is perfectly okay. Nearly 30% of our incoming students have absolutely no idea. Um, so we still provide them academic options in exploratory studies or undecided. Shippensburg does have a two-year residency requirement, but our students are living in the best of the best. Um, we do offer suite style residence halls. Some provide private bedroom options. Um, they all have private bathrooms. So again, a lot of availability there. As a first year student, you can pick the one you want to live in. Dining, of course, lots of great places to eat. Um, so we have two big buffet style dining halls, 10 other quick eateries across campus, Dunkin' Donuts, Starbucks, whatever you're hungry for, you'll find it on our campus. A lot of learning happens inside of our classrooms. Equally so, a lot of it happens outside of the classrooms. So Shippensburg does offer Division II sports. Um, we compete against the um, PSAC and the other Pennsylvania State System schools. Uh, so we have 11 female sports and nine male sports to choose from. If you're not looking for that competitive factor, we off also offer club sports and intramurals, which are just for fun. Um, in total, we have about 150 different student organizations, so truly something for everyone. Um, our largest student organization is our marching band, so a lot of really great uh, um, options that you can choose from as early as your first semester. With diversity, we've got a lot of really strong programs, centers, student organizations. We've got a pride center, our multicultural student affairs office, our accessibility resources office, which works with any students who may have documented disabilities. Um, so we really do want to provide that gateway to get to Shippensburg and again, be the most successful student. So applying, very easy to do, university application, Common App, either will work. 
Um, so we require your high school transcript and also your application. Last thing I wanna point out, I know I'm quickly running out of time. Um, for out-of-state students, out-of-state students only pay 105% of in-state tuition. So we make it very affordable. And with the scholarships we offer, um, it's definitely great to check us out. Very good, thank you. Thank you. St. Joseph's College, Brooklyn campus, you're up next. Okay, let me just share my screen quick as well. Oh, that is not the correct one. Hold on one second, sorry. Okay. Okay, so thank you all for attending this fair. My name's Jacqueline. I'm an admissions counselor at St. Joseph's College in Brooklyn. So just, um, I mean, I, as much as I can say in six minutes, but there is way more to St. Joseph's than what I'm going to say in the next six minutes. But our enrollment size is about a thousand undergraduate students. We are a very small school. Um, there are many benefits to this. There is a lot of one-on-one -on -one attention and, you know, being in a borough of New York City, we are not Manhattan, but being in a borough of New York City, it is great to have a small campus center that is a community feel. We are located in Clinton Hill, Brooklyn, um, and this area is very residential and it's very safe if you are going to um, be walking around here at night, which is something that I do um, get questions about when I am talking to students. So our annual tuition is 28590, not including housing. Our tuition was frozen from 2019 to 2020 due to COVID. 98% of our incoming freshmen received some sort of financial aid, grant or merit-based scholarship. And again, at the, at the last bullet, uh, merit-based scholarships and grants are offered. So something that I wanna go over besides our admissions policy is test optional. So we do require an 80 GPA. Um, again, we're test optional for fall 2020 and fall 2022 students. So that's great. Um, if you do wanna send in your test scores, it doesn't matter. We do look for at least a 980 on the SAT and a 19 on the ACT. So you must indicate on your application, which is either the Common App or St. Joe's application. I always tell students, make your life easier, apply on the Common App. Um, and you need to indicate if you want to be with, um, considered with those scores. We're also gonna look at the rigor of your curriculum. So if you took any IB credits, um, AP credits, all that good stuff, we are going to take that into consideration. And we also look at demonstrated interest um, in St. Joseph's, which would be attending a session like this. Um, we also look for your personal essay. We look at all that good stuff. We do take more emphasis on your school activities, community service and paid work. Um, just make sure you put that on your application that you have that. I've been having that issue where students reach out to me seeking more scholarship money and they are actually very involved and they just forgot to indicate that on their application. There will also be um, additional writing supplements, which is just a paragraph. It's not a full um, other essay, but obviously I recommend that you do that so you can get the highest scholarship that you deserve. So again, we require an 80 um, GPA and we are test optional, but we do look for a 980 on the SAT and a 19 on the ACT. Here are scholarships. So the top three scholarships are our honor scholarships and that's the presidential scholarship, essay non videri and dean scholarship. So the presidential scholarship is 28 grand SA non videri is 20 grand and the Dean scholarship is 17 grand. You will be considered for the honors program automatically um, by an admissions counselor. And then we have scholastic achievement scholarships of 10,000 and 13,000. Then we have the out of area grant, which is um, $5,000. So if you do not have a New York address, you will automatically get this grant. I'm gonna skip over the CSJ grant just because that's only for New York schools. Um, there's the Catholic high school grant. So if you attend a Catholic high school and did not receive a merit-based scholarship, you will get the Catholic high school grant. Um, the alumni grant is if one of your parents or siblings attended St. Joseph's. We do have two campuses. So even if they attended the Long Island campus, you would get this alumni grant. And then we also have the transportation grant, which is for Staten Island residents. I just say that because I know sometimes Staten Island students live in New Jersey actually. 
here are academic majors that I'm going to go through quick. Um, our most popular would be education, nursing, criminal justice, and business. Um, just to touch on the nursing program, since it is very popular, we do not we do not um, require a TEAS exam or any sort of entry exam. If you get accepted to St. Joseph's and applied as nursing, you will automatically be in the nursing program. I always encourage students to um, apply undeclared be, unless they want to be in nursing or education. The only difference for nursing requirements versus um, regular rolling admissions is we do look for an 85 overall in science and math. Here's our student life. So quickly, again, this is our bear cave, which is our old gym, but it's now a student lounge. We have there are over 30 clubs and organizations, which is your academic clubs, Greek life, performing arts clubs, campus ministry and other really religious organizations and multicultural clubs. We also have common hour events, which is when an hour um, each day, the um, students all have the same hour of no classes. And we also hold off-campus events. If you see a club that you're interested, but we don't have it, you can start it yourself by getting 10 signatures and a faculty or staff advisor. And then quickly, I will go to the housing. So we are located in Brooklyn Heights, which is a more city feel. And it used to be a hotel. Um, you will be dorming with a St. Joseph's College student, but you um, will have all the amenities that a hotel comes with. And it is a great way to meet other students. So here's our contact information. And thank you for listening. Sorry, I only had six minutes or I would have given you more information. That was great, thank you. Now we've got Stevenson University as our last presenter, take it away. Hello, good evening everyone. My name is Elizabeth Fitzgerald and I'm excited to be with you this evening. Um, thank you so much for making it through the end of this session with us and to hear more about Stevenson. Um, let me uh, start the slideshow there. There we go. Stevenson University is a small private liberal arts university with a distinct career focus. We are located in Owings Mills, Maryland. As you can see there on the zoomed in part of the map, we are in the northwest suburbs of Baltimore. So about 30 minutes from downtown Baltimore. Uh, we really take, try to take advantage of our great location. We're only about 45 minutes from the state capital of Annapolis, about an hour away from Washington, D.C. So it's nice that we're close to all of those cities, but in the suburbs, so kind of removed from that hustle and bustle on a daily basis. But you do have all those resources there for jobs, internships, or, you know, just a fun day at the Inner Harbor or a ball game with your friends. Um, coming from New Jersey, we're just a short trip down 95. Uh, so pretty accessible there, um, you know, just a matter of a couple hours away from wherever you are in New Jersey. Looking over to the right side of the screen is an aerial view of our campus. Our Owings Mills campus is an expansion area for us, and we were founded there in 2004, while our college as a whole was founded in 1947, but at a more rural campus about six miles away from there. So this area is really the future of our university, and we're not done growing yet. We've acquired more land around our campus, and we're still continuing to grow. So it's a very exciting time in the life of the university. Here are the nuts and bolts of the university that I like to make sure to share with interested students. We have about 2,700 full-time undergraduate students here. That lends itself to an average class size of just 17. So we really like that small class size, encourages a lot of communication between the students and professors in the classroom. And we have no large lecture halls, so you won't even see those on tour. Uh, 14 to 1 is our student to faculty ratio, and we have a diverse student body, about 42% of our students identify as a member of a racial or ethnic minority group. One thing about Stevenson that we want to make sure that you keep in mind about us is our connection to career. Everything we do since we've been founded is all about connecting students to life after graduation and getting them hands on experience related to their career. So to that end, all of our majors provide opportunities for internships, research or capstone experiences, which is like a culminating big project at the end of your four years. But not only do we provide those opportunities, they are required for graduation 
graduation. So you really can't escape that. You will have a nice prepared resume with practical experience by the time you graduate and real world experience to be able to draw upon for job interviews or graduate school applications. Here is a list of our undergraduate majors. You'll see they're divided between six undergraduate schools. Among our most popular are nursing, that is our single largest major at the university. It is a direct entry program, uh, and so it does require specific admission to the major, but you would be considered nursing right from freshman year if admitted. Uh, we also have a biomedical engineering program that also requires specific admission to the major. Beyond nursing, our most popular majors include business administration, biology, criminal justice, and we have a large deciding population as well. You'll see we have some unique ones like fashion design, fashion merchandising, film and moving image, counseling and human services, so a wide variety. Many of these majors have tracks within them where you can get a bit more specific in your major or pick up a double major or a minor or even a professional minor. Um, those are unique to Stevenson in that they are four classes classes in a more professional discipline rather than uh, six classes in the typical academic discipline, although we have those as well. We also have six pre-professional studies if you're interested in going on to law school or medical school or the like. Here's a rundown of our application process. We operate on rolling admission. Uh, we try to get back to students within about two to three weeks of filing their application, if not sooner. Uh, so we try to keep you, you know, abreast of the information as quickly as we can. Um, the application can be filed through the common application or through our own Stevenson website. There is no application fee uh, when you submit your application. Then you'll provide, your counselor will provide your official high school transcript and we'll see everything you've done throughout high school. We need an essay and a short response. So that's about it, just those couple of um, materials there. We did go test blind for this academic year. Uh, we haven't made final decisions for next academic year, but it is likely that we'll continue that. So check back on our website uh, when you're in the application process. In terms of scholarships, all accepted students are automatically considered for merit-based scholarships, and they range from 10,000 to 20,800, and we put that information inside the admission letter if you qualify. Then there are some other specific opportunities that students must apply for separately, like the Presidential Fellowship, a full tuition award, leadership scholars, and service scholars, as the name suggests, um, you know, are for students who are passionate about those areas. Uh, if you are in a visual arts major or a theater program, you may be interested in submitting a portfolio or doing an audition for the chance at additional awards. And then the founder scholarship is interview based if you have a minimum 3.0. Uh, as we're coming to the end here, just want to point out that we do have both in-person tours as well as many virtual visit options. So go to our visit website and sign up for one today. Here's my contact information and I look forward to seeing you on campus. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right, everyone, we are going to do one more thing before hopping off. I'm going to share my screen. So in order of presenters, feel free to share um, one fun or interesting fact about your school. So we'll start with Plymouth State University. One is definitely hard. Everyone will probably be seeing the same thing, but um, I say our ski day. So we have a whole week called Winter Carnival, but one of those days you get classes off and it's a free day on the mountain. Uh, you get to ski with the president and all the other faculty and staff members on campus. So I think that's my go-to one. Nice. All right, Rutgers University. All right, great. So I would say a fun fact about our school is that during our homecoming weekend, uh, we have something that's called the bed races. We allow our students to take their mattresses out of their residence halls and race it down the heart of campus on College Avenue. It, um, all the proceeds and donations that come, into, um, come in go to a good cause, but it's a really exciting and fun little tradition that we have on campus. Cool. Savannah College of Art and Design. Yeah, so if anybody has been to um, Savannah, Georgia before, they know it's an absolutely beautiful city and historic city. Um, so SCAD's actually responsible for saving um, uh, Savannah, Georgia's architectural history, which is really cool. So much of the, the restoration and preservation of the beautiful historic buildings in Savannah uh, was at the hands of SCAD and SCAD students. 
Very cool. Shippensburg University. So I had mentioned that we were founded in teacher education. Um, we actually have the only public elementary school on a college campus in the state of Pennsylvania um, and one of three in the United States. So it started when the university started. So again, a lot of students choose us for teacher ed because of that factor. Love that. St. Joseph, St. Joseph's College, Brooklyn campus. So I would say the most interesting thing about St. Joseph's is definitely we are a very small school and it's just great to see like we're more of a community and everybody knows each other on campus. Um, just like how I, I know students who aren't even, you know, my student tour guides or involved in admissions at all. They're, I just know them from walking around campus. So I would definitely say that's the best part is everybody knowing each other, even if you've never had a reason to um, interact with them in the first place. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Stevenson University. Yes, Stevenson University has an interesting historical connection to the NFL. There's a building on our campus that is now a sports and wellness center, but that was the former headquarters of the Baltimore Colts and Ravens until the Ravens built a new headquarters about five miles down the road. But more recently, um, continuing that connection, they started a Ravens flock chapter on our campus, not only to build their Ravens fan base, but it gives our students co real career opportunities in the field of sport management. Uh, where we often bring guest speakers to campus and they could even have some interesting opportunities within the Ravens organization. So last year, just prior to COVID, I had the opportunity to go to a lecture of Jacoby Jones when he came to campus to speak as part of that organization. Wow. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you all for those really fun facts and for um, joining us for the presentation today. When you close this window, there will be a link to a very quick four question survey. We'd appreciate any feedback you can provide. In about a week, you'll be able to find this session's recording as well as all the other session recordings at strivescan.com backslash OCSCA. Thank you so much to our panelists for sharing your time and uh, all of these wonderful facts about your schools. And thank you to everyone who attended this presentation. Have a wonderful rest of your evening. Take care.